So we have some possible cap cuts for the NFC West, respectively. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at some notable names here, and we'll start things off with one Richard Sherman Harris. What are you thinking here? Yeah, this is one that was pretty pretty well reported once he blew out his uh, Achilles uh, in the middle of the season. He's owed $11 million next season. He didn't have a very Richard Sherman-like year. He was kind of dealing and banged up with injuries all year long. The Seahawks, as of right now, are not doing well with the cap. They have to get rid of some of these guys. All the defenders wanted to get paid at once. They're currently only looking at about 10 mil of cap space, which is good, except it's not because they have so many people. They're in the seventh worst position in terms of cap space. Exactly, which if you're the Seattle Seahawks and you're looking to extend your run is not what you want. I think this might be the end of the line for Richard Sherman with the Seahawks. I don't know how you can pay a corner $11 million to, you know, come off an Achilles injury and be the same elite player. $11 million is not chump change for a corner. No. That's top five corner money, and I don't know if he's going to be entirely worth it. There's zero dead money. if they, Or excuse me, there's only $2.2 .2 million in dead money if, the, if they decide to cut Richard Sherman. I think the, the risk is there in order to get that $11 million back. I, I think this is more likely than not. I'm, I, if we were giving out heads, I would give this one three Goodell heads. I'll put it that way. So Sherman would be making the same amount as one Aqib to leave that next season. Let me put it this way. Which one would you rather have for that price? It's you really know? difficult to say. I'd probably take to leave. Just right. he's not coming off of a debilitating exactly. injury. Look, I'm, I'm no doctor. We'll never claim to be a doctor. But the Achilles is very, very important if you're going to be a corner or just a professional athlete in general. That quickness, that power that he's been able to generate uh, when he's playing press man coverage on the outside, that's made him so iconic and possibly a borderline Hall of Famer, maybe not even borderline anymore. I, I don't know if he's going to be the same player if he comes back with that injury. All right, so Richard Sherman, a Seahawk representative. We got another one for you. Cam Chancellor, this one does not make as much sense as it would for Richard Sherman because if he was released, talking about Chancellor, it would charge the team $19.5 million, and it is so high because $7.5 million of his signing bonus would accelerate plus the $12 million fully guaranteed that would kick yeah. in. So what, why we have him on this list is not necessarily because he might get cut pre-June 1st. is that he might get cut later in, in the offseason because he might end up retiring or the Seahawks just can't pay him because he's coming off of a really debilitating neck injury. Rumors have it, and according to Pete Carroll as well, that Cam Chancellor may never play football again. Mm. So the reason we have him on here is not because because they're going to outright cut him because he's not good anymore. He is still very good. He was the sixth overall safety according to Pro Football Focus this year. But at the same time, if he's not playing football ever again and they don't want to pay him $7.5 million, they might just have to eat that dead money and move on from him and let him go find somewhere to go. We saw the Denver Broncos do that this past offseason with TJ Ward. So it's not exactly unfounded, but... That injury that he and Cliff Averill both suffered, they actually ended up suffering the same kind of neck injury. Both of them might not play football uh, for the rest of their careers. There's, that's the reason we have him on here, more of an injury risk than an actual money problem. All right, so those, there's Cam Chancellor there in terms of a possible cap cut coming out of the NFC West. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the Bay Area here. Jimmy Ward, safety for the San Francisco 49ers, saw limited action this year, broke his arm in week eight. He's a quality player, but it's all about return on investment, Harris. Will they get that return on investment? He is currently the second highest paid player on the entire team. He's owed $8.5 million next year to be bad. Like, he's just been a total bust since they drafted him in the first round. I believe it was in 2014. He just hasn't been good. He never really lived up to the hype. They thought that he was going to be kind of an Antoine Bethea kind of player, and he just never turned into that. And I think it's a, it, it, it's unfortunate because I had a pretty high grade on him when he was coming out of college for me, but I'm, I, I think it's time for them to move on. They, they are trying to really re-up their entire defense, especially there's a couple rumors as well that they might move on from Eric Reed as well. They have a couple pieces in that secondary that they can grow on, but they need to rebuild that safety position. You can't have a safety who's seven, who was ranked 77th by Pro Football Focus, who by all measures has been a complete bust, be the second highest paid player on your team. That $8.5 million could go to a wide receiver or go to a safety. No dead that, money either. Exactly. There is no backlash on them cutting him besides the fact that they're giving up on a former first-round pick. Maybe they give him one more year to let him live out his rookie contract, but at this point has not been the player they thought he was going to be. And we're projecting that the 49ers are going to be 
one of the more expendable in terms of having cap space. They have some of the most room out there across They're, the NFL. They will be the most active team in free agency this year. They will most likely be able to bring back Jimmy Garoppolo because they have so much space. They will be signing more wide receivers. I'd also expect them to sign an offensive lineman, get some more depth on the D-line as well. All right, so there's Jimmy Ward checking in in our NFC West. Possible cap cuts. Here at number two, Robert Quinn and Harris. You look at the numbers for this guy, and it's just darn sad. Look at his pro football focus grade. Yeah. since 2013 99 like an mm -hmm. elite year for him and then it went from 83 to 83 to 68 to 58 this year a poor grade I'm gonna kind of adjust this a little bit I don't know if they're gonna fully 100% cut him I think they're gonna 100% ask him to take a pay cut biggest cap number on the team biggest cap number on the team if they cut him fully they get 11.4 million dollars and you know who they've designed to an extension this offseason oh yeah uh, maybe both Todd Gurley and Aaron Donald who are not going to come cheap they have a ton of cap space, and it's fine, but I think that Robert Quinn is going to have to take a, a big pay cut if he wants to stay on this team. They have to give that money to Aaron Donald. They almost didn't have Aaron Donald this season because they were playing hardball with him with the contract. Robert Quinn has was and has been one of the best DNs in the NFL, one of the more underrated defensive players overall. I, he that, that one season he had, he got a 99 overall grade from Pro Football Focus way back, uh, way back when a couple of years ago. I think it might be time for them to either move on or ask for a pay cut. The production just isn't there anymore. And between him and Andrew Whitworth, they're giving out 24 million dollars. The two highest paid players are also two of the oldest players yep. on the entire team. They got to pay Aaron Donald. They got to pay Jared Goff. They have to pay Todd Gurley coming up. They're going to need to tag Sammy Watkins or sign him to an extension as well. A lot of these young players need money, and Robert Quinn has a lot of that money locked up right now. So Quinn's getting older. This guy is certainly getting older. Mike Ayupati, guard for the Arizona Cardinals, and I could just see the Cardinals doing an overhaul of their offensive line. Now, Ayupati had a triceps injury that sent yep. him to IR early this season. And his pro football focus grade dipped from 2015 to 2016, so it's getting worse. He's 30 going on 31, and the Cardinals currently have the fifth worst, worst cap space right now. Yeah, and I think they need to free up some money. He's been injured two of the past three seasons with some pretty debilitating injuries. And look, he's a good guard. He's solid. Like, when he comes in, he's decent. But at the same time, is he a TJ Lang, uh, TJ Lang who went to the Lions or and was a pro bowler this year? No. Or David DeCastro? No, he's not. He's a decent guard. He'll get picked up by somebody at a way lower amount of money than he's given. I'm sure he'll end up with like a three-year contract for about 15 or $16 million, maybe five or six mil from another team that really needs a guard. But at this point, with the Arizona Cardinals needing both a quarterback plus a head coach plus wide receivers, and really they really need to reshape that entire offense, I think it's time for Mike Ayapaya to go. Another name for the Cardinals to look at, I think they also might cut Jared Veld here, their left slash right tackle, wherever they want to have him as the day goes on. I, th I think it's time for them to move on from a lot of the older guys in their offense. There's also a rumor that they might cut Tyron Matthew as well. I think that's wow. crazy because there's a lot of dead money if they do that. But the, the, the rumor is out there. All right, so those are your candidates coming out of the NFC West. Richard Sherman, Cam Chancellor, Jimmy Ward, Robert Quinn, and Mike Ayupati as possible cap cuts there out West.